What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about a film I got to check out just a little bit early ahead of its release on the horror streaming service Shudder on March 22nd and that movie is called You'll Never Find Me. Directed by Josiah and Indiana Bell and also written by Indiana Bell, this film stars Brendan Rock and Jordan Cohen. And before I get too far into this review, as I typically like to do anytime I get to check out a movie a little bit early, I'd like to say a big thanks to those kind folks over at Shudder for sending me over an early screener for this. Whether I enjoy their films or not, I'm always happy to check out a movie from Shudder because when they're really good, I find that they're really good or they're at least intriguing. And in the case of You'll Never Find Me, similar to other screeners that I'm sent ahead of time, unless it's a big theatrical release that's got all kinds of marketing everywhere, I do my best to avoid any of the trailers or even reading the synopsis. So going into You'll Never Find Me, I had only seen the poster and I knew nothing about it. But since this is a review, we're going to talk about what this movie's all about without getting into spoilers, so let's get into it. The movie opens up and we're introduced to an older man named Patrick. He's sitting having a drink at a table within his mobile home and instantly the tone of this film is established. Through the editing, the cinematography, the eerie music that's playing throughout, we instantly know that something is up with this character of Patrick and you kind of feel like he's being paranoid about something within his own home but the movie doesn't really give you any answers, at least not just yet. Not too long into the film though, he gets a knock on his door by a young woman who in the film is played by Jordan Cohen and she's asking if she can use his phone, can you give me a ride into town, it's raining, there's a big thunderstorm outside and he's like, yeah, come on in. He seems a little weary of her, she seems weary of him and he tells her, I can't give you a ride right now because it's raining so bad, my car is also messed up, but I can help you get to the payphone, it's a little bit far but I can help you, but once the rain stops. She's a little bit weary of him initially, and immediately, you don't really know who to side with at the very beginning of the movie. There are parts of the film where you feel like this is a creepy guy and this young girl has knocked on the wrong door, and then there are other times where he just seems like a genuine nice guy who's a little bit weary of a stranger who's knocked on his door. And similarly, there's moments where this young girl seems like she's kind of lying, that you don't fully know her true story, that maybe she's there with her own ulterior motives, and you don't really know who to trust. And so now you have a movie that takes place in one singular location throughout the entirety of the runtime, a movie that really heavily relies on performance, cinematography, and overall tone and atmosphere to really get across its overall message. And singular location movies can be really hard to balance. They can become very stale very quickly, and it really is up to the filmmakers to create exciting and interesting incidents, as well as give us interesting dialogue and great performances to really keep us engaged in those singular locations. And so in the case of this movie, for the most part, I think where it really, really shines is when it comes down to the performances, as you have two characters that you don't fully know if you can trust them, in a very tense and uncomfortable situation. A young girl who's kind of now stuck in this house with this man who seems creepy at times, but she also seems creepy at times. And again, you don't fully know who to trust in this situation. Add on top of that some really great cinematography, a really eerie musical score, and what you have is a really interestingly well-made film that takes place in a singular location. Now, if I had to lean into any gripes though, I will say immediately that I think what held this movie back for me for being great was that it was rather boring at times. Sometimes the gentleman in this situation played by Brendan Rock is giving very long monologues that oftentimes feel incredibly poetic and feel a little bit disjointed from the dialogue that's coming from the young woman in this situation. And it's purposeful, but it did at times make me kind of just lose a little interest. There are segments of this film where some of the dialogue isn't all that interesting and I kind of found myself mentally dozing off thinking about other things. I was engaged to see where things were going to go, and by the time we get to the end of the film, I do think this movie has a very creepy message that's at the end of this film, to be completely and utterly honest. But I can genuinely say, though, as I was watching it, though, I found it to be a good time. I found it to be an entertaining enough watch with some really solid performances at the center of it, and I think that that's where this movie is really going to shine for a lot of people. The performances, most notably from Brendan Rock, but from both of our lead stars here as well, Jordan Cohen, I think were fantastic. Brendan Rock is not an actor I've ever seen in anything else, and he has majority of the dialogue and a lot of the close-ups in this film. The two of them do, and I, again, I really want to highlight that they both give great performances, but Brendan Rock was one that I was like, I've never seen this guy in another movie, and I thought he was phenomenal in this role, oftentimes becoming a character you really believed in, and at other times being a character that you feel very creeped out by. He does both very, very well on top of the various other things that this movie kind of asks of both of our actors, and I think the two 
of them had fantastic chemistry as people to make these moments feel incredibly awkward and uncomfortable and ultimately kept me engaged to see where it was going to go. Like I said though, I struggled with a portion of this film though because at times I did find it to be a little bit slow and a little bit stale. While I do think this film has incredible filmmaking, like the cinematography, like the performances, like the lighting throughout the course of the film, like the editing and the musical composition, as well as the sound design throughout the course of the film that also adds to that eerie and creepy atmosphere, I think that the movie, what really holds it back for me is sometimes it feels a little overly long, it felt at moments a little bit slow to my liking personally, and a little bit boring. And I can see this being a movie that turns away some people, but also absolutely is a movie for other people. I can see some people absolutely loving this movie, and I can see some people absolutely thinking this was a boring slog. And I found myself more in the middle. I was so, so impressed by all the filmmaking of this film that I couldn't help but enjoy all that, while also recognizing that at times I did feel bored, that I did feel a little bit disconnected in moments. But by the time I got to the end of the movie, I felt like I was just so impressed by the filmmaking that I have to kind of lean slightly more positive. I watched the movie last night as of filming this, and initially I was a little bit more negative in the moment. I thought uh, it was a little bit slow and boring at times, and I'm leaning more towards that. But I've also been dealing with allergies, so I was taking some allergy medication. Maybe that added into me feeling a little bit more sleepy while watching the movie. I never fell asleep or anything, but maybe that added to the experience. So I slept on it, and I thought about it today as I was at work earlier in the day, and I started to recognize that I was appreciating the film more and more as it sat with me. And I think this will be that kind of a movie for a lot of people. Something that maybe at first they don't fully know what they think about it, but as they sit with it and they start to think about the performances and what the movie is trying to say, I think they'll walk away with it with a little bit more of a positive outlook. And when it comes down to the message that this film really has kind of wrapped up in it, it really does kind of tug on the reality that there are so many people in this world who are never found, who do terrible things all the time that are creeping in the shadows and you don't know who it is that you can trust and who you can't trust sometimes. And even people who seem very trusting can oftentimes be some of the creepiest and most dangerous people that are in this world. And I think that that's something that we've learned has happened plenty of times. There have been times where we find out decades later that somebody has committed all kinds of heinous crimes and things. And this movie definitely leans into that kind of an idea of the the fear that there are these people out there that are not going to be found or have not been found. It, it's a pretty creepy thing to think about. So definitely want to hear what you guys have to say about You'll Never Find Me. Whether you've seen this film or you plan to see this film or you haven't seen this film, whatever the case may be, leave any and all comments down below. Is this something that's on your radar? Whatever the case may be, hit that like button, comment your thoughts, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.